let's talk a little bit about trauma bonds. So there's a lot of videos about trauma bonds here, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about explaining what they are. So trauma bonds are created. They are a bond that you feel that can sometimes be mistaken for love, attachment, and um, being in a relationship with someone when they are toxic to you. So if you've had someone being very toxic to you, hurting you, um, manipulating you, gaslighting you, projecting, um, doing all of this in a way to spin everything so that they don't ever have to take accountability, so that they don't ever have to own up to anything they do, and so that they don't ever have to show you any empathy because, frankly, they don't have the ability to, then you may have, be experiencing trauma bonding. So what happens is when you have intermittent reinforcement or inconsistent reinforcement, meaning it's inconsistent and intermittent, it comes and goes. A lot of people call it Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or Ms. Hyde, right? So you've had this other person give a certain face to you that is pleasant, positive, loving, kind, whatever it is, and then they flip and suddenly they devalue you, they criticize you, they can't see the good in you, they don't listen to you, all of you know you know what i'm saying here and it just keeps going that way and then randomly out of nowhere boom up pops the other reinforcement side which is the positive and then the rug gets pulled out from under you again and on and on this cycle goes back and forth forever that does something to your brain okay it literally makes your the chemicals in your brain change because what happens is you're chasing the high you're chasing the good time you're chasing the positive just make it better and you're doing this in a way that feels like relationship you're you're engaging with that reality of that person in a relationship way. How can I fix this? What can I do better? What can you do better? You're engaging with it. You're not just sitting back and going, whoa, that person is all over the place with their affection. That person, you know, you're not observing it from the sidelines, you're in it. And what that does to your brain is it creates chemical changes. It makes your dopamine cycle start to chase, chase, chase the need for the relief, which is finally, they like me again. All right. And that feeling, and you know, that feeling, if you've ever experienced it, right, you can feel it in your body, you can feel your mind and your whole body reacting to this. That becomes part of this trauma bonding experience. Okay, this is part of what creates it. So there's four things I have written down here, intensity, complexity, inconsistency, and promise or hope those elements help to create the trauma bond. Now, I'm not saying that a narcissist is like, I'm gonna go trauma bond you now. It's just part of how being with someone who is as highly manipulative as a toxic narcissistic or otherwise toxic personality disordered person can be and how, the, how functioning with them, what happens. Okay, so it's, it's not a plan it's just part of the process. It's part of what happens when you have the things they do happen. Okay. So the intensity, meaning um, everything, everything is dramatic and intense, even around the most boring narcissistic person, because then you're driving the intensity because you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much nothing going on. Cause I've heard of this type, right? A lot of them are more, um, they're basically really dramatic and then they often claim they don't like drama but there's a lot of drama around them a lot of drama within their their life and so on so the complexity is the gaslighting it is the manipulating it is the blame shifting and the projecting and all of that it creates a complexity and something that could be so simple hey what time are you home and then the complexity of the answer that you'll get will blow your mind okay that's confusing it makes our brains have to work to have a conversation it makes our minds 
enmeshed and engaged with the other person's reality instead of our own because we don't just get a simple answer and can go on with our day no we get a simple answer that makes us have to chase whatever's happening track down sleuth out you know what i'm saying it, it what i have here is it it creates a reality where your life is about managing theirs or tracking theirs or whatever it is to keep you safe in the relationship all right. And inconsistency, we just described that earlier, so I won't keep going into that. And promise of hope or promise and hope, it's that future faking, right? And it's the, the promise and hope, the, the hope comes from also the intermittent reinforcement. We see the good in them. As empathic people who they are usually attracted to, we see the good in people. We see the people's potential. We see, we want people to to do well to be happy and all of that right so we think that they think that way too and we think we see it in them even when we know they don't think that way we see in them what could be you can have the most toxic manipulative psychopathic person who had a bad bad childhood and someone with a high level of empathy for others who is twisted and, and trauma bonded into a, in a relationship with that person might say things like, yes, I understand. I, I can see how much of an amazing person they would have been had they not had that trauma. Or, you know, the excuse making becomes part of it, but also it's this, but I see the glimmer of hope. I see who they could be. Forget it, okay? They are who they are. They're adults. We're talking about adults here. They can make choices in their life to heal or not heal. Narcissists can only do so much because they don't literally have the part of their brain functioning where empathy will go any further than cognitive empathy, which is recognizing other people have an experience, if they even have that much, right? So, and, and it's not your job to live on hope that someone might treat you well. That isn't a relationship. Okay, so when you're trauma bonded, you're, you're attached through this traumatic exchange. You are bonded through that. It is, you are having sympathy and empathizing with your toxic manipulator, with someone who is harming your life. You have, in your physical body, you have heightened levels of cortisol and adrenaline it affects the way you think. You're always in fight flight. And let me tell you something about fight flight. When you're there, the logical part of your brain literally cannot function the same way. It can't. You're in fight flight for a reason. It's danger, get out. That's the reason. The reason we're in fight flight from somebody actually being harmful to us is to tell us to get away from it. And when we don't get away from it, we just stay there spinning our wheels in fight flight. And then our logical part of our brain and the logical part of our emotions, the part of our emotions that wants what's best for us is getting completely confused with this other experience of I'm still sitting here, even though this person, you know, it's, it's very uh, twisted, braided together and twisted together. So it, it requires an untwisting. You're, you're groomed here. Here's the thing. You don't just walk in and be like, hey, trauma bond me. I'm up. I'm game. You know, no, you, you're groomed here. You think you've met the love of your life. You think you've met an amazing person. You think, or if it's a parent of yours, you think, well, they're my parent. They're my mom. They're my dad. They love me, right? Okay. So their form of love is toxic. That's the problem. So when you're trauma bond, thing that's so hard about it, or one thing that's so hard about it is when you get away from this person and they're no longer in your life, you're no contact, and you're still feeling this stuff. You're still feeling drawn to them. You're still feeling like you want this connection, even though your mind's like, no, I don't. And that's why we, we have tips for how to break it. And one of them being make a list of every horrible thing they've ever done to you. Actually, you could make a list of 10 things and you'll see just how horrible it is. You don't even need to go into everything. But seriously, if you make a list and you just keep a running list, you'll be like, what? <laughs> what was I living, right? So um, that's, that doesn't fix it often. It can stop you from reaching out, yes. And it's very, it's very important to have and to do this. Um, 
but it takes time and you got to allow yourself the time. This is not something that happens overnight. This is something that happens over time. So give yourself the same experience the other direction, okay? Be gentle with you, be kind to you and understand that you're going through something right now and that it's a slowly breaking the cords, right? Cutting the cords in many directions. It's not one thing. So so keep watching the videos, keep working on staying no contact and and understand that your body is and your brain and all of it is needing the time and space it needs to to heal and to get through this. Reach out through peer support, reach out through coaching or group coaching if you need it because it can really help anchor you in what you want for your life versus going back to something that you know isn't good for your life. All right, that's it for now. I am Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. And if you have anything you need, if you would like info on coaching or group coaching, check out the comments in every video. And otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Take care.